When I was three, I watched these train simulator crashing videos. No, not trains or railworks. No, I'm talking about an old game where the trains flew around like spaghetti and for some reason the video creators used awful background music. No, seriously, listen to this hot garbage. I'm of course talking about Microsoft's Train Simulator. Myself, and I'm sure many others, obsessed over this game, so I was sad when the game was no longer compatible with the computers me and my family got. However, there's a group of people who made a new game that revives Microsoft Train Simulator. I'm of course talking about Open Rails. <laughs> I figured I'd download it and revive my inner three-year-old again. So I downloaded it, and now I'm here to give a completely honest review of the game. No, seriously, brutally honest. You don't even want to know how honest. Starting off with the game itself, the Open Rails website gives you a download link for the game, along with a few things you should install if you, I don't know, want to play the damn game. Anyway, this starter kit gives you a few things, including a tutorial on the game itself and its controls, because it has changed a lot from the original MSTS game, and a zigzag route, which I didn't install it because I thought it looked dumb. Onto the part that you actually need in order to get started with this game. The BNSF starter route, this gives you the Dash 9 in both Heritage 2 and 3 paint schemes, an empty and loaded grain train consist, and my favorite, the intermodal consist, which includes double stacks and a bit of piggyback trailers. Check out that cargo ship. The route itself takes you from Wenatchee to Everett, which is in Washington State in the U.S. of A. This Google Maps drive fairly closely follows the train route, and I'm just too lazy to actually animate. Time to check out the graphics. Since the base game is from 2001, I won't scrutinize this very thoroughly, but I will mention some things, such as this gray crap which is all over the place for some reason. I'm not sure if I installed this incorrectly or what, but you should probably fix that. One of the things I care a little less about is the copy and paste houses, which I noticed but didn't really care about too much. Something that Open Rails inherited from MSDS was the extremely empty maps. If I didn't know better, I'd think my voice would echo back from the empty landscape. Wait, this game has palest shoe source? And Old Navy? And Blockbuster? <laughs> There are also positives. The locomotives look pretty good, along with the fact that the containers and trailers actually have real companies on them like JB Hunter Swift, which is a nice touch. Probably the best part about all these upgrades to the original game, the sounds. Holy shit, they nailed the sounds to a T. Just listen to the train's horn compared to what it sounds like in real life. So like I said, they frickin' nailed it. Another sound they nailed, the engine sounds themselves. Listen to this thing spool up. That sounds pretty good if I don't say so myself. The headlights are the H key. Press once for dim, press it again for bright, which also activates the ditch lights. The reverser is W for forward, and S to go backward, pretty straightforward, <laughs> get it? The A key is to move the throttle down, and the D key is to move the throttle up. The B key activates the bell, but you have to hold it down for it to continue sounding. If you just tap the bell button, it'll only ding once. And the horn is spacebar as usual. And the brakes, you ask? They're not necessary for where we're going, yeah! The camera controls are similar to the original game. One is the cab, which is completely static, which is a bit of a downer, but it was also like that in the base game. Two is the outside view, for the locomotive specifically, and three is the outside view for the rear of the train. The controls are the same for both, arrow keys or right click your mouse. The four key puts you in a trackside camera type look, which tracks the center of the lead locomotive. Just hit four again if you don't like where the position is. The five key does nothing for some reason, but the six key puts you on the front railing of the lead locomotive, sort of like a switching conductor type POV camera. The 8 key is the free camera, which has weird controls, arrow keys, left and right arrows for, you guessed it, left and right, and the up and down arrows for, again, you guessed it, up and down, and then move the mouse to look around. The 9 key again does nothing, and then the 0 key gives you a compass for some reason. Cool. There's plenty of other add-ons for this game to make it better than it already is, but this is just a quick review from a guy who works at a supermarket and photographs trains all day, so what do I know? I'd give this game a 9 out of 10 for audio, a 6 out of 10 for graphics, given the time period which it was initially made. Accessibility is a 10 out of 10. The game is free, which means any schmuck can just go download the game. Where have I seen that before? Oh wait, that's me. I hope you enjoyed this more casual game review. I highly recommend you go download this game. It's free and totally not a money hog. But really guys, $30 for essentially a Microsoft Train Simulator route? Come on, that's nuts. And all the routes cost money and it's... Wait, there's one? What's the catch? Oh, that's what the catch is. Huh.
No, but seriously, you should download this game. It's 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 good for a free game. I I guarantee it. You'll enjoy it. Either way, thank you for watching, and tell me what game to review next. See ya.